Hi everybody, in this video we are going to discuss about the Ascari's life history and development. Ascari's life history and development. We know that Ascari's lumbricoids is causing a disease called as what Ascariasis. Ascariasis which is infecting the small intestine. So we are going to now discuss about how it is completing its life cycle in the humans. And we should remember that this is a dioecious organism means the sexes are separate and we can also use the word dimorphic when there are two individuals present separately we are going to use the word dimorphic and because this particular organism is completing its life cycle within one host that is the humans we call this as monogenetic we call it as monogenetic so all these terms you are all very familiar but today we are going to discuss now the life history and the development of the ascaris life history and development of the ascaris as you, as i said that it is dimorphic or sexes are separate found on two different individuals and that's why we said monogenetic so suppose if this is one okay if this is one worm okay if this is one and here is another one okay here if this is another worm okay if this is another worm okay here are the two worms okay round worms we call them okay ascaris ascaris lumbric ascaris lumbricoides now here the smaller one okay the smaller one is the male okay the smaller one is the male okay the smaller one is the male round worm and whereas the long one is called as for the female okay male and female here these two worms are present in the small intestine so let us start how these are multiplying and completing the life cycle in the very beginning let us imagine that these two worms okay ascaris worms ascaris lumbricoids are male and female worms are present in the small intestine of the humans of the humans so here when they are present in the intestine so let me say that this is the intestine okay this is the intestine okay i left here as the intestine so here this part is the intestine let us say this is the intestine so here are the two worms let us start from here there are matured adults okay these are the adult worms one we said as what the male worm and one we said as what the female which is long so here these two will be involving in copulation involving in the first one copulation the first one copulation so the first one is what copulation the first one is copulation please remember this is what we are going to discuss now the first one copulation so the first one is copulation we will start with copulation it means what mating the male and female are participating in sexual intercourse mating so that we are using it as what copulation so during copulation the male will have the pineal spicules it has the structures called as pineal spicules these are needle like these are needle like which helps in opening these are present in what the male worm okay these are present in the male round worm pineal spicules are present in the male round worm these pineal spicules will help in opening the opening the vulva of the female opening the vulva of the female round worm okay female round worm so once these pineal spicules of the male helps in opening the vulva of the female round worm now the male will deposit the sperms male will deposit the sperms now these sperms are now involved in what fertilizing the eggs these sperms are involved in fertilizing the eggs now now here the sperm is now involved in what fusing okay fusion of male gamete with the female gamete that we call it as what fertilization so once the copulation is completed once the copulation mating is completed with, between the male and female round worms now the male worm is releasing the sperms into the vulva of the female now these sperms reach to the egg and fertilize the eggs fertilize the eggs so the second step is what now let us say this is copulation is the first thing that happens and the second one let me say here as the fertilization second step is fertilization so when fertilization occurs when fertilization occurs it leads to what zygote it leads to 
zygote. Now here we have to remember one thing. Very very important thing is that egg. If you look at the egg, it is enclosed or it is covered by three layers. It is covered by three layers. The outermost layer that will be present on the egg is the protein layer. Please remember the outermost layer is the protein coat. Protein coat. And then innermost or middle layer is made up of chitinous. Okay. It is made up of chitinous. And deep inner. Okay. This is the middle. This is the outermost. Protein is the outermost. Middle is the chitinous. And innermost is the innermost is the lipid layer. Okay. Lipid coat will be present. These things are very important. So once the fusion means what we are saying, fertilization occurs. Once the fertilization occurs, now what is formed? Zygote is formed. Zygote will be formed. And this zygote now undergoes different stages of development. Zygote will undergo different stages of development. So this zygote divides, mitotically it divides into two cells. Thereby into four cells, which is appearing like T-shaped, and thereby these four cells are arranged in such a way they appear as rhomboidal. They are appearing as what? Rhomboidal. So we call it as rhomboidal four cell stage. Okay, rhomboidal four cell stage we call it as. So from as the zygote undergoes mitotic divisions, it is it is changing into two cell stage that into four cell stage which are now changing and taking the shape of a rhomboidal cell stage and this process will be continuous division will be taking place for the formation of the main one called as what the blastula okay which is of 16 cell stage we call it as now this blastula will be containing what a small cavity which we know it has what blastocele okay blastocele will be there a small cavity will be there and at the center, there are a group of cells like ball like structure that are arranged at the center. And close by what? The layer called as the germ layer called as the ectoderm. Germ layer called as the ectoderm. Now, this changes this blastula, that ball like structure now divides continuously and forms as gastrula. It forms as the gastrula by a process called as gastrulation by a process called as gastrulation now once the gastrulation occurs for the formation of what gastrula this will be changing into an embryonated egg this will be changing into an embryonated egg please remember this is all here you are coming across the word egg here also you are coming across the word egg this is unfertilized egg this is fertilized egg which is we are here calling it as what embryonated egg and this embryonated egg, what we said, it is enclosed by what? Three layers. What are those? Outermost layer is protein layer, protein coat. Middle layer is what? Chitinous. Innermost layer is what? The lipid layer. It is there, same. Now, this we are calling it as what? Embryonated egg. And because of the presence of the protein coat, because of the presence of the protein coat, if you are seeing the protein coat, okay, if you are seeing the, if you see, the protein coat as I said that this is like rippled okay it is rippled if you are seeing here it is rippled like folded it is appearing like folded the protein coat is appearing like folded because of that because of that even here with unfertilized egg or even with the embryonated egg now we came up to embryonated egg now look at here if you are seeing this embryonated egg which is covered by a protein coat which is rippled folded into many foldings we call this as mammillated eggs we call them as we call them as what mammillated eggs we are calling them as what mammillated eggs we call okay mammillated eggs we are calling them okay mammillated eggs we are calling here okay we are calling this egg as what mammillated eggs in the same way here also it is the same but now let us see as this process occurs now here are the embryonated eggs okay embryonated eggs all this is taking place okay all this is taking place in the intestine it is all happening means what copulation fertilization and development of the zygote into an embryonated egg is taking place in the in the intestine now what happens through the fecal matter 
Okay, now we are talking about infection. How the infection is caused? Through the fecal matter, okay, from the intestine. From this is all in the small intestine. Please remember, this is in the small intestine. So from the small intestine, these embryonated eggs, okay, will be released outside through in the fecus outside. Okay, these eggs are released along with the fecus outside for, during defecation. During defecation, the fecal matter will be containing what the eggs will be containing the eggs now. So how this now enters into others we are going to see now. Okay, how these eggs will be entering into others we are going to discuss how these eggs will be entering into others body. Here, the first point that we have to keep in mind is that once the eggs are excreted through the fecal matter now the development of the young ones will be taking place within the eggs okay within the eggs development will be taking place so here the development will be taking place within the eggs leading to the formation of first stage larva so you have to remember whole development is taking place within the egg within the egg so here what we said the egg is enclosed by what outermost covering is what protein coat middle layer is what chitinous the innermost layer is what lipid layer we said now here the whole development is taking place within the egg leading to the formation of first stage larva now leading to the first stage larva called as rhabditi form okay rhabditi form larva okay rhabditi form larva we call it as okay rhabditi form larva is formed okay this is the first stage larva let us say that this is the first stage larva that is formed rhabditi form larva this is taking place in what within the egg embryonated egg we are calling so within the egg there is a development uh, development of this uh, organism and we are calling this what rhabditi form larva now this rhabditi form larva is this which will be undergoing now first molting okay this rhabditi form larva is undergoing first molting we call it so you know the word or the meaning of the word molting means what the changes it undergoes the changes it undergoes in simple way we can say the changes it undergoes for its growth and development we are calling it as what molting or otherwise shedding we call it as shedding so here the whole development is taking place within the egg leading to the formation of what first stage larva now this first stage larva okay is undergoing first molting is undergoing first molting after undergoing first molting means some change it is now called as second stage larva okay second stage larva we are calling it as okay we are calling it as second stage larva okay we are calling it as second stage larva which of what it what it is called as second stage rhabditi form larva let us say second stage rhabditi form okay rhabditi form larva here we have to make note of one very important point that is remember first stage larva is not infective okay it is not infective to man please remember this first stage larva is not infective to man then what is infective to man always you should remember it is the second stage rhabditi form larva is infective to man very very important point this is okay second stage rhabditi form larva is infective to man okay infective to man this is a very very important point that you have to keep in mind now here this first stage larva is now changing into what second stage larva by undergoing what second molting okay it is undergoing first molting we said and now it is undergoing what the second molting okay so he, sorry this is the second stage larva so second stage larva is what it is infected to man now this second stage larva undergoes second molting undergoes second molting but before that it is this second stage larva which will be taken into the body either directly in the form of second stage larva or with contaminated food and water so how it is entering into the human beings it is entering into the human beings through the contaminated food and 
water. Through contaminated food and water, the second stage larva through the mouth, okay, it enters into the body. It enters into the body. Now inside the body, what is happening? Now it reached through the mouth, it entered into the body. Okay, body means what? Mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine. So where this will be developing, we say it is developing into adult worms in the small intestine. So it reaches the small intestine. So what is reaching? Second stage larva is reaching to the intestine, small intestine. Please remember, second stage larva is reaching, second stage larva is reaching to the small intestine. Here is the second stage larva. Now this is the second stage. Same thing here. It came now through contaminated food or contaminated water. Drinking contaminated water. It is here now. Now this second stage larva will be hatched out will be hatched out and it is hatched out and now from this small intestine please note here once it enters inside it is hatched out once it is hatched out from this small intestine now it is coming through the bloodstream outside it is entering into the liver through hepatic portal system through hepatic portal system this hatched out larva will be entering into the liver it will be entering into the liver now once it reaches the liver it undergoes further development it undergoes further development and here it will not stop with the liver it will be moving into the heart through what through the postal post caval vein okay post caval vein it will be entering into the heart heart so once it enters into the heart it is again much more it is developing so as it develops now, from the heart, it will be entering into the lungs now. It will be entering into the lungs. So when it enters into the lungs, how it enters into the lungs? It is through the pulmonary artery. It is through pulmonary artery from the heart, it enters into the lungs. What is entering? This, this larva which is hatched out is entering, crossing what? Entering into the liver, from the liver, it is entering into the liver through what? Hepatic portal system or portal vein. Entering into the liver, from the liver it is entering into the heart. Through what? post caval vein. From the heart it is entering into the lungs. Through what? Pulmonary artery. Okay? Through pulmonary artery. In the lungs now, inside the lungs, please be careful. Inside the lungs, there here it develops now. Here it develops. We said what? It is the second stage larva. Now, in the lungs, second stage larva will undergo the molting. Okay, will undergo molting. Okay, second molting. And here it is changing into what now? Third stage larva. It is changing into third stage larva. We will see it very clearly with the diagram I will show you. Okay, we will see with the diagram of what is happening here inside the lungs. So, with a simple schematic form, we will try to understand this diagram. We will try to understand this, this diagram, how it is developing, how it is developing. See here, we came up to second stage larva and second stage larva is the infective to man. Infective to man. Please remember, this is very important. Okay, this is infective to man. So, it may be taken directly or through the contaminated food and water, this will be taken through the mouth into the digestive system where it develops. In which part of the digestive system means? It is the small intestine we say. Now what is taken into the small intestine? Second stage larva. Now this is the second stage larva. And this has been developed, hatched out, entered into the liver through the hepatic portal system. From the liver we said it entered into what? The heart. And from the heart, it, it, it entered into the heart we said that it is through post, post caval vein. From the heart, it entered into what? Lungs through pulmonary artery, we said. Till there we have seen. Now, inside this lungs, what is there present? It is the second stage larva. It is the second stage larva that leads to the lungs. Now, inside the lungs, what is present? Second stage larva is present. Now, this second stage larva is now entering again back into what? The intestine again entering into the intestine. Now we have to be very careful here. Second stage rapidity form larva, okay, 
which reach to what let me say here it reach to the lungs okay it reached to the lungs okay it reached to the lungs second stage larva reached to the lungs so here from here it came here now what is happening in the lungs in the lungs the second stage larva undergoes second molting please remember change second stage larva reached the lungs up in there there in the lungs it is undergoing what second molting and uh, second stage larva is changing into what now third stage larva this is happening where inside the lungs only second stage larva changed into third stage larva by undergoing what second molting now third stage larva in the lungs only this is now happening in the lungs only here okay this is happening in the lungs only third stage larva here third stage larva okay third stage larva is formed where inside the lungs it is formed in the lungs now third stage larva which is there formed inside the lungs will undergo third molting okay will undergo third molting okay please remember third molting which means second and third molting second and third molting is taking place inside the lungs only where the second stage larva is changed into third stage third stage larva is changed into fourth stage now so what is present now inside the lungs it is the fourth stage larva okay fourth stage larva is present now this fourth stage larva which is present there okay which is present where now inside the lungs okay fourth stage larva present inside the lungs this is the main one will be coming out from the lungs it is coming out what is coming out fourth stage larva is coming out from the lungs when a person coughs or when a person sneezes there are chances that this fourth stage larva will be coming out but make note one point that is in the fourth when it is there in the fourth stage larva this fourth stage larva can enter into the alveoli and rupture the blood vessels can rupture the blood vessels and from there it will be moving when we are coughing or sneezing again it comes back into the mouth from the lungs how it is entering into the intestine means it comes back into the mouth how it is coming back into the mouth through the trachea through the first it is through from the from the alveoli it is coming into the bronchi from the bronchi it enters into the trachea from the trachea it comes to the pharynx and then into the mouth and in reverse it will be going into the esophagus from the mouth it is going back into the esophagus here that is the crucial point we have to keep in mind so from the lungs this fourth stage larva is coming out from the lungs entering into the mouth from the mouth it enters into the digestive system and see here now from, this is here from here what is moving fourth stage larva is moving back into the intestine small intestine again it is going into the intestine okay again it is going into the intestine what is entering into the intestine now second time it is entering it is the fourth stage larva that is entering into the intestine once it enters into the intestine now it undergoes the fourth molting it undergoes fourth molting the fourth stage larva is undergoing fourth molting and now it is changing into what young ascaris young ones okay young ones are formed and these young ones okay these young ones okay which are formed will now develop into adults these young ones are developing into what adults okay they are developing into adults now so here are the adults which are developed which are developed young ones are developed but for these young ones to attain sexual maturity then only we call them as adults when the young ones are attaining the sexual maturity then we call them as adults so the young ones to attain sexual maturity indirectly we say adults but here i am making it very clear the young ones to attain sexual maturity it may take about 8 to 10 weeks okay it may take about 8 to 10 weeks it will take okay to for the young ones to develop into adults or sexual maturity once they reach the sexual maturity now again the male and female okay one which is long is the female one which is small is the male 
they involve in copulation then fertilization then the development of the zygote and the zygote develops into an embryonated egg and these are present in the fecal matter we say once they are present in the fecal matter they are undergoing first molting we are saying the egg is within the egg only the development is taking place embryonated egg embryonated egg what the, within the embryonated egg the development takes place where the first molting will take place forming the first stage larva please remember first stage larva is not infected to man then it undergoes the second molting changing into second stage larva this is the infective to man which we are calling it as what rhabditi form why we are calling it as the rhabditi form please note because in the phylum nematoda in the phylum nematoda there is a genus okay there is a genus called as rhabditis there is a genus called as rhabditis please remember there is a genus called as rhabditis so it will be appearing like this these are uh, rhabditis so that's why the name is given as rhabditic form okay that's why the name is given as rhabditic form so this rhabditic form larva second stage rhabditic form larva through the contaminated food and water it enters into the body and there it is hatched out reaching to the liver then from the liver to the heart and from the heart to the lungs where it undergoes two changes there and from the lungs again it is entering into the into the intestine and from the intestine it is developing so here we are seeing its development only in the humans only in the humans which is uh, that's why called as monogenetic this is how the life cycle of the ascaris is being completed okay the life cycle of ascaris is being completed so we have to keep this points when we talk about the ascaris okay when we talk about the ascaris so here one point that we have to remember once it releases the eggs these eggs that are present in the fecus can be there present in the soil under favorable conditions for about 6 years for about 6 years okay they can be there present in the soil under favorable conditions under favorable conditions this is another point we have to keep in mind and another point please remember the female round worm can lay up lay eggs about 2 lakh okay 2 lakhs of eggs okay 2 lakhs of eggs will be laid by the female worm okay by the female worm so these are some points that we have to keep in mind when we discuss about the life history and development life history and development and in the next video we are going to discuss about the pathogenicity pathogenicity and the treatment that is given for this disease caused by the ascaris and the disease name which we are discussing is ascariasis okay ascariasis thank you so much